A number of changes for the Newcastle Knights for this important clash against the Titans. The return of Adam McDougall in jersey 19 means that Keith Lulia goes back to the interchange bench in four where he's joined by Joel Edwards. Cameron Seraldo will start in 16. There's no Ivan Tuamavavi. That means Mark Tafua gets a start in 15. The coach is Rick Stone. The Gold Coast Titans just have a minor change. Preston Campbell will start in the hooking position in 17. Matty Schrama goes back to the interchange bench. Anthony LaFranchi will play his 200th first grade game today. The coach is an ill, John Cartwright. So all of us is in readiness. The second game of a doubleheader on NRL Sunday. The Warriors winning game one. Who will win game two? It is the Gold Coast Titans who have first use of the footy defending the northern end. And in game 200, Anthony LaFranchi has the first hit up of the day. And he's taken to ground by a junior sow. And a slowish play the ball. Here comes Greg Bird. Back in home territory here in the Hunter for Greg Bird. Preston Campbell without the headgear, but he doesn't need one with that mop of hair. He's got Presto at acting half. I can't remember the last time I've seen, I saw Preston Campbell without headgear. I can't remember what I've Makes him two or three inches taller. I can't remember what I've seen him without much hair. <laughs> Here's LaFranchi. It is the last tackle for the Gold Coast. Slow and steady set start as Bo Henry gets the kick away. Straight to Kurt Gidley who couldn't handle it. Back into his in goal area. And it's a good chase here from the Titans. Not through the tackle of Bailey, but not Minicello. No one to pass to there for Jared Mullen. He's not too happy either. Costigan. Three in the tackle there. Forcing him back to ground. Torby, one of them. Thompson and Bird as well. Here's Sal. Pushes away from Prince, gets away from Thompson, but can't get away from Greg Bird. He flings him to ground 30 metres out on his own line. Kafusi. Eight short of the halfway line. Last tackle here for Newcastle. They decide to kick through Matt Hilda. Coming up with it is Jordan Rankin. It was Housen that was kicking it, not Matt Hilda. 15 short of the halfway line. First touch in first grade for Dominic Peru. Mead plays it. Here's Prince turning it back to Bird. A long way before the line, and Bird somehow got the offload away, and Rankin was waiting for him. It's his third game of the year, Jordan Rankin. His fourth in first grade. There's Luke Capel, played with the Ipswich Jets last night against the Northern Pride after signing with the Brisbane Broncos during the week. And so Jordan Rankin's been given the opportunity. And Gidley makes the tackle. Kicking game on target so far. Scott Prince, two kicks that have both found their way deep into Knights territory. The chase has been up to scratch. For, so, well, John Cartwright, the, the coach, is not here. He's... The second hospital still up in Queensland. His replacements wouldn't be too unhappy about that. Steve Murphy and Trevor Gilmister. And that was Steve you just saw on camera there. And the other one is Trevor Gilmister wearing the blue shirt today, as he always does. Kafusi. That's Tafua, who's nine short of halfway. It is the last. And Stig gets his kick away. It's a big kick too and taken on the full in the in-goal area for mine by Jordan Rankin. The referee disagrees. Well and truly in the in-goal area. And he has to return it past the 20 anyway. He could have also let it go and it would have gone over the dead ball line easily. Not much difference there. Maybe he just jumped from the field of play and... Yeah, I think he did. I think he actually took a step in the in-goal area it, intentionally. But they didn't pick it up. A little bit too far away from it for the, the officials. There's Campbell trying to get the markers offside. I thought he may have. Kafusi with the tackle. Rankin at acting half. LaFranchi to Prince. Now here's Henry stepping. Defender slipped over Stig. And the tackle was tidied up on the inside by Cameron Seraldo. Last tackle. Prince 
looking to put the ball into the corner. Gidley right on his own goal line. And now it is Akuyuate, who is one-on-one -on -one stripped from Bird. Now Prince, meet for the corner, and the Titans will score. It was a one-on-one -on -one strip, Greg Bird on Akuyuate, and David Mead gets the try. A little bit of luck for the Gold Coast Titans, but it's been missing for them for most of the year. You know, real skillful play that was there from Greg Bird. Uwate looked like he was going to bust the line. Coming across field, always difficult to handle, skipping outside of players. Gidley gets it right in the corner, gives it back inside to Uwate. And Bird was the man. It looked like he was going to try to beat him back on the inside, and he just got a hand on it. That can't have been ruled forward from Bird, could it? Well, it looked like it, it was, was going in that into direction. The thigh of Aki Uate. Yeah, I thought they might have stopped and had a look at that. It's an interesting one. Tough kick. Not the preferred side for a right foot kicker. He struck it pretty well. He struck it very well, Scotty Prince. An extra two points for the Gold Coast to make them lead by six points to nil down to the touchline. Brayton Astor. Yeah, it's been a great start from the Titans, but in particular their kicking game. We all know how good Scott Prince is, but they have the added extra of Henry now on the team. Great start. They've found the corners and put some pressure on the Newcastle Knights. Gidley with the restart. It's a floating kick, and it was a tough one there for David Mead, who I must say didn't look extremely comfortable under it. It was a tough one. I think it would have been tough for anyone. You're not sure if it was going to go back up over his head or land at his toes. Here's Bird, heavily involved in the start of this game. Campbell, Bailey. 25 out from their own line here, the Titans. Henry, Jared Mullen. I thought he might have got back the 10. You didn't get, get, in, didn't get a 10. You ain't square at marker. You've got to take a spot. You've got to take a spot. We could see that coming, though, Henry. Just ran out of dummy half intentionally to, to get a penalty there, it seemed, and then got one for his side. Uh, well, I think he was square. He just wasn't at marker. Mm. I thought he'd gone the 10. But the referee said he wasn't square. Well, that's completely different to not being, you know, up close and personal as marker. But anyway, the penalty's been given, and it means the Titans are down on the attack. Minicello will play. 30 out. Prince, long ball. Henry. Runs that stick, who makes the tackle. And has a mate there, Neville Costigan, helping him. And it's a solid shot to Bird. Now here's Torpy. One hand and stays in the field of play. Junior Sauer, the defender. Bird. Still going. Greg Bird. Isaac to voice around the legs to bring him to ground. And also in there making the tackle. Was Tafua. Now it comes to Henry, kicking its off legs. Still not played out and into touch. Thrown back in, and the Titans have wasted an opportunity there. You just couldn't thread that ball through, Bo Henry. They had equal numbers of defenders there, the Knights, but they had to stay up. So it was a good chance to get the ball in the end goal area. Costigan, a very short blind side. He's just come to the tackle, otherwise, he was going to go very close to that touch line. And a penalty. No, no, he might. He pulled his arm. Pulled it out. Pulled it out. Okay. Strip in the tackle. Pull the, Pull the ball out. What's that? Strip. Well, the Titans are claiming he pulled the arm and not the ball. Well, I think the referee said he pulled the arm. I'm going to go, fellas. Here's the line. Here's the line. So Preston Campbell's hanging on around the football and it comes free. Oh, difficult to tell from there. Did the ball come free? Well, it did on this, did on this occasion, the Knights. The tackle count restarts. Stig, Preston Campbell one-on-one. -on -one. He had to give the ball back almost. Gidley. Mullen. Here's the Mad Dog McDougal. First touch of the afternoon. 30 metres away. The Knights with their best opportunity to mount some pressure here on the Titans' defence. Houston. 
25 metres away from the line. They're right in centre field. Gidley's to the left. Mullen to the right. They come to Gidley. Pops it back to Tafua. And he's tackled right on the 20 metre line. Bailey, one of the defenders. LaFranchi, the other. Stick. Pass to Sauer for the corner. McManus steps inside Henry. Scores the try. The pass from Stig went behind the decoy runner. And the Knights have hit back. James McManus, his eighth try of the year. But it was the pass from Ryan Stig that created the opportunity. And I think he had to get rid of it pretty quickly too, didn't it? A decoy runner ran through. It looked like if he'd taken another step or two, it could have been a, an obstruction. So he shoveled it out to Junior Sow, who and then got it onto his winger. So Stig here, well, yeah, he did. He got rid of it certainly in time. Sow gives it on to McManus. Well, he stepped inside. I think he expected someone else to hit him there, McManus, when he when he stepped back inside the cover defence. No one was there. Kurt Gidley from the touchline. He struck it reasonably well as he hooked it too much. Just enough to hit the upright and go through. Six all is the score. And how important will those two points be at the back end of this match? You're giving him all the wraps there, Mark. I thought you were putting the mocker on him. Here's the try again. Stig quickly out. And they just had that one man overlap that Titans defenders got all they pushed in too much. They didn't have an overlap when they started that play, but someone coming off their line. Campbell at acting half. Henry to the wing of Uate. Gidley is there as well. The ball doesn't travel that far. Minicello couldn't get the handle of it. Yeah, it's a change -up. Change -up. He'd already right set his sights right for the corner there. there. Mark Minicello. Right there. As he came around the back there, that football, if it had bounced up a little bit better for him, he was going to give it, give it his best to get into the corner, but he just couldn't handle it. Not a bad option on the last tackle there from Henry. And it is Bubble Henry who is penalised here. Yeah, go Sean Cameron Seraldo. Right, Cameron. He's a fair size, Bo Henry, isn't he? The 5 eight. I don't think you missed Cameron Seraldo here. Oh, he slipped up a little bit. Off the football. I'm surprised that it wasn't Stay placed on the court. We saw Jamal Idris placed on the court for a tackle last night against the Roosters, which I didn't think was anywhere near as bad as that one. Go, yep. Titans roll in front of the referee there. Oh, no! Tenzi, boys, Tenzi. Nafusi. Here's Tafua. To stay for the halfway line. Great! Two slides, get up, get up! Work for us, Greg! Stig. Cross the gap. 40 metres away. As the band starts up. Here at Osgrid Stadium, Mullen, Gidley, Gidley into space, Henry chasing, Uate will be hard to stop, they can't stop, up to Uate, and the Knights are in front. It was Mullen, it was Gidley, and the icing on the cake is Aku Uate. Yeah, he wasn't going to let James McManus be the equal leading try scorer for too long. He's jumped ahead again, Aku Uate. The Knights right winger. It's going to be a tough afternoon out there if they give him this sort of space. A nice little play out the back there for the decoy runner. Gidley just gets outside of Henry, flicks it back to Yuate. Plenty of work still to do. Rankin can't stop him. Making their first change as Gidley has drilled another one low. He's almost taken the head off the touch, Judge. And that was reminiscent as Matt Gidley looks on. The new CEO of the Knights. That was reminiscent of one he kicked here a couple of months ago that was awful and almost or just scraped over and how about this Aku trying to stop him here good luck and all down here into the field though but they managed to score two tries looking tidy with the football both sides haven't they I think the Knights' only mistake is, is, was the strip on Uate. Edwards. Titans have only 
had one incomplete set themselves. Mullen, Mullen, and it's Shelley there with a the tackle. 15 metres away from the line. Gidley takes the line on and got through. Well, got the arms free at least, but there was no one there to pass to. It is the last. Mullen, they're going to run it. Seraldo, the bounce was a dream one for Aki Uate, and he's got himself a double. The Knights extend their lead. A little bit of luck, but luck's a fortune. Yeah, it's a cruel bounce, that one, isn't it? If you're a Titans fan or a Titans player, Peru thought for sure it was going to Adam McDougall. McDougall thought it was going to him. So he jammed in the Titans winger only to see it bounce behind and get picked up by Aku Uate. Here it hits the ground, it's shoveled out, and oh, all of a sudden there's a free run to the line for Uate. Struck this one a bit better. The touch judges don't move. And it's two more for the Knights. 16 to 6 down to the touchline. Break the Nasta. Yeah, guys, worrying signs for the Titans. I can't help but notice the ease in which the Newcastle players have been bringing the ball out of their own 50. Not to mention, every time the Newcastle Knights have been in the Titans 30 metres, they've scored a try so, so far this half. Stay with us. Defence and attack has been a problem. They're all, they're all around game, really. In the Gold Coast this year, they concede the most points. They score the fewest points. They make the fewest line breaks and bust the fewest tackles. On the other side of the coin, Newcastle has the most line breaks and bust the most tackles, but they have trouble scoring points. They've got 16 of them at the moment, and they lead. They haven't scored 20 points or more in their previous 11 matches. Newcastle, opportunity here. It's a slow play the ball from Costigan, who gets up limping. Could be a worry for them. Been an on again, off again season for Neville Costigan. Injury wise, and De Goyce gets away from Thompson. Mullen with a juggle and just got the kick away, and Rankin 10 out from his own line. As it covered and runs into the shoulder there of Neville Costigan. He might be limping, but there's nothing wrong with his shoulder. Yeah, you don't want to do that too often, Jordan Rankin. He's one man you don't want to run straight into, Nev Costigan. You find that one out the hard way. Here's Peru. Matthew White. Ball out the back to Sharma. Seraldo comes up with a couple of tackles in a row there. Prince. Here's Bird. Just over the halfway line. It is the last tackle. Henry with the kick. Gidley has it covered. Oh, Henry slowed him down. Minicello and Shrama tied it up. Here's Aku. Bailey with the tackle. Go okay, Dwyer out there as well. He's on there for Bodine Thompson. Here's a strong run from Tedavano. Still going, Costigan, I should say. De Goose, now Mullen, Stig under pressure. Gidley, Hilda, Edwards, offloading back to Costigan. He gets the offload away, Hilda quick hands, Mullen, now it comes to Stig. Not the best of passes in front of McDougal, but nice bounce again for Uate. It is the last tackle. Is the bounce pass part of the game plan today for the Knights? Work for them once. High ball from Stig. Mead attacks it and comes up with it and ducks under the tackle of Gidley. Great work, David Mead. Overcalled his fullback, Jordan Rankin, then. He's wanted that ball badly. Came up with it. Looked like it was going to land in no man's land. Trauma at acting half. And here's Dwyer on the inside. Mead nailed by Edwards. Shut that down. Tedovano was there as well. Prince. Costigan with another tackle. And here's the last. Rankin. 
A high spiral bomb. Tough one for Uate. He couldn't get near it. Peru wants the bounce. Minicello gets it. Still the last tackle. They're saying Aku didn't get a hand near it. White with the kick. Over the head of Mullen. Here comes Prince. McManus tidies up and gets back into the field of play. Matty Schrama claiming he was, he was obstructed. The only problem there for Schrama was that McManus didn't gain any more metres, so there was no advantage, but they've gone back into the in-goal area. Great defence from the goal. Case. That's a big play from the coach. They needed that. Ground of boys go on drop out. They needed to get on the front foot here somehow, and they've done it. Matty Schrama, big effort there. Here's the bomb. Well, it's not a drop bomb. It, it's gone right through, and I think they're right. It has not touched Duarte. Eventually, Matt White puts the, the kick through. Got a good bounce. McManus somehow gets back into the field of play. Well, Shrama reckons he was obstructed there. And here's the play on De Goyce. Good effort. Three of them there. He's giving them another set of six. And here comes Brendan Lawrence. Spent some time down in Canberra. An opportunity now here at the Gold Coast. Has been playing very well for Burley. Playing just his fourth first grade game. See the completion rates. Fantastic, isn't it? Both sides. 15 from 17 the Knights. 11 from 12 the Titans. They want to convert that into some points pretty soon. In fact, what they need to do is get a few more sets back to back. If they don't score. Me. Half a chance. There hasn't been too many stoppages in the play. Gold Coast players down in back play. Jordan Rankin. You just see him there as the ball goes past him. Here's Prince. Scotty Prince. They won't stop him from there. Scott Prince, when he runs the football, is a different player. And the Gold Coast are a different team. But put that try down to the fact they forced a goal line dropout with their defence. And Scotty Prince took advantage. Yeah, absolutely. The Knights never really recovered from that extra set they had to do defensively. Titans happy to swing the ball out to this right side. Good hands, Torpy to Mead. He looked like he was going to squeeze through at one point there for his second try, David Mead. And it's from this shift, the Knights, oh, their defensive line, it's, well, it's not real straight, isn't it? Prince just decides he's going to dummy to kick, and they all held off. Just to the right of the upright and adds the extra two, converting his own try. And they're back to within four. Well, here it is again. Prince showing it, just gets that step back inside. Seraldo. Tedovano couldn't cover it. Just 30 seconds to go until half time. Oh, there's Edwards coming into the ribs there of Minicello. That wouldn't tickle. What are the Titans going to do in these last couple of tackles of the half? Two, seven, eight, move now. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Go to Matthew White. Three, two, three, go now. Hold it, hold. Gidley's playing up short, ready for the chip ball kick. It's a kick straight to him. It was neither a chip or it was almost a half-time kick there from Scotty Prince. There's the siren. Junior Sau to Uate. Aku kicks. The size not to chase. Now what is Jordan Rankin going to do? He might kick it as well. It comes back to Mead. Mead puts the foot down. He offloads here to Zilman. Zilman's away from Uate. He then throws the ball back to Prince. Seraldo comes from him from behind. And Greg Bird decides we better not take any more chances. Half time, it's Newcastle leading the coast by 16 points to 12. Second half is underway. The Knights defending the northern end of the ground. First use of the footy. And here is Tedovano bringing it forward with a solid run. That is a terrific hit up the start of the second half. And quite rightly, the crowd applauds and his teammates do as well. Former Titan in Matt Hilda up towards the 30. Oh, there, 
boys hold. Go. Sorelda. Just shy of the 40 metre line. Mullen, Edwards. Now here's Sting. They've got space here. The Knights. Terrific work. Sal gives it to McManus. Prince the cover away from him. He's got the full back to beat, and he does so. That is a wonderful rugby league try. The Newcastle Knights at their best. In fact, you won't see better than that this year. They've created a three-man overlap. That was just excellent play there from the Knights. They got to the 40-metre line from the kickoff in three tackles, but when they decided to go left with a couple of decoy runners, suddenly the space on the outside was, well, it was overwhelming. The Titans had, just couldn't cover it. They had so many players to, burn, to, to spare on the outside. Well, here's this hit up from the kickoff that set the scene for the, the night's second half. Ted Ivano, just a great effort. His teammates were clapping, the crowd was cheering. But look at that, the Titans jamming in there and the overlap, huge. Sal, well, Scotty Prince was the only man who was ever gonna get there. McManus, he threw the dummy back inside. Sal, I reckon, could have scored as well. He was being trailed by one of the Titans. But McManus, when he got the football in his hands, knew that he just had one man to beat win the cover, throws the little dummy back inside and gets over for his second of the afternoon. Great start to the second half, the Knights. To add a little bit of icing to the cake, it just over the crossbar from Kurt Gidley and Braith and Astor on the touchline. A dream start for the Knights, and what a try that was. Yeah, it certainly was, and Rick Stunner will be very happy with that. He wanted his team to be very positive, just to relax, keep playing footy, and hold on to the ball, and opportunities will come, as they just did for that try. And Gilmeister, he wanted his team to tighten up the rough, improve the speed of the line, and work together in defence, and they didn't do that for that first sex. First set of six, and it cost them dearly. It certainly did. Tedavano back again. Here they go again. Edwards now to Hilda. Taken from behind by Henry. And Minicello should be penalised and will be. I think he knew exactly what he was doing there too, Mark Minicello. And they're in a little bit of trouble here, the Titans. Well, we just heard what Trevor Gilmore, to the, the stand-in coach, wanted from his side to improve their defence around the ruck. They're not doing that. John Cartwright, he's in hospital up on the Gold Coast. He'll be reaching for the morphine button. Well, actually, put him out. He'll be transferred to intensive care at a moment. Tedavano, he is the most penalised, one of the most penalised players in the NRL, Mark Minicello. There's Gilly looking on. He'll be wanting to shorten a few blokes up in a moment if he can get back out there in the blue shirt. <laughs> Mullen. This is a critical set here for the Titans. They need to hang on here. De Goyce out of acting half. Where's the defence around the middle of the ruck? Well, still in the dressing room at half time, it looks like. Edwards. Here's Mullen. Tedavano. Hilda. Seraldo. It's opened up. Straight through Minicello and Cameron Seraldo scores the try for Newcastle and they extend their lead. The Gold Coast Titans are shot ducks at the moment and the Knights are having a party. We've got to give the Knights a wrap there from great ball movement and just searching for the hole. But we've got to say the Gold Coast Titans, they have opened up so easily. It's soft. Back on the inside there, they're just playing at the line and look, there's players all over the shop but no one's committed to the tackle there and if they're not careful here the titans it could get very ugly very quickly and newcastle for the first time in 12 matches have scored more than 20 points and little costigan and antonio kafusi and their cadell evans impersonations Maybe a little bit slower than Cadell. The Titans defend again. They have not touched the ball in the second half. Edwards. And Bailey getting ready to come back on. That'll be their sixth interchange. Seraldo. So 
William Zillman's come from the field for the Gold Coast. Edwards. Nine short of halfway. Held up. Ball and all tackle. Matthew White. And the Titans here a chance of getting the footy back. Mullen with the kick. Mead will take it on the full. And finally, the Gold Coast have some football. Well, look at that possession in the last five minutes. One percent. Oh, they've got to do something with it as well, the Gold Coast. They've got to get themselves into this Knights territory and try to get a good kick away. So Bailey's on for White. Here is Bailey. And he's outside. Number 11 there, Bodine Thompson. He's filling in the spot for William Zillman. And he's lost the ball there, Luke Bailey. He just got on the field, determined to get his side somehow out of this hole they've been in in the second half. Here, boys. Doesn't come up with the football. There is William Zillman with Preston go, Campbell and Matt White on, on the team. bench. Anthony to Frankie is there as well. You need, they need something. They need three tries, don't they? At least in this second half, even more. So you'd imagine Preston White back on the field soon. He's got a bit of magic about him still. McDougall will play. It was only this second incomplete set of the match, the Gold Coast. And they find themselves down 28 to 12. But having said that, they've already missed 32 tackles in the game so far. And, and they do, you know, despite the fact their completions are great, their defence has looked a bit flimsy all afternoon. Even when the Knights in the, in the first half, at times they weren't scoring points, but they were rolling through them a bit, a bit too easy. Gidley. Steve. Sorrell, though, behind McDougal. Another ball that hits the ground and bounces perfectly for Uate. That's three times, and he scored off one of those. Uate. Last tackle. Gidley, don't think he expected it. He moved out of the way for Mullen to get it, but still got a kick away, and Mead has knocked it on. They'll get another set here in Newcastle. Well, he's had a go of it. And that's OK. He's had a go of it, David Mead. He's looking in the sun, but at least he got up and had a go and didn't let McManus or one of those, the Knights out there on the left have a free shot at the ball. James McManus is good in this area. Down to the touchline, Brayton Astor. Believe it or not, until that error, well, actually, including that error, Newcastle Knights have made more errors than the Gold Coast Titans, but the key point, in fact, is that the Titans have missed 32 tackles compared to Newcastle's 15. The second half way we seem to be continuing here for the Gold Coast as Steak finds McDougal. McDougal across field, the Mad Dog away from Henry. The Mad Dog's in! Adam McDougal in just his fourth game of the season crosses for a try and the party continues in Newcastle. And he's still got it, the Mad Dog. My dead set thought he'd retired a month or so ago. Where did he come from? It's only his fourth game of the year. Hasn't seen a lot of football this afternoon. In fact, the ball keeps going behind him and bouncing to Iwate. Well, this time he's got hold of it and beaten three or four defenders to crash over. This is why they picked him on the right wing, despite Keith Lalea playing some good football lately on the right centre, I mean. Great effort there, Mad Dog. And there's another two points to Kurt Gidley. And in the 12 minutes after half time, they've conceded 18. Got to try to keep their heads up here, the Titans. Try to find a way to stop this avalanche of points that's come against them in the second half. Wonder how Cardi's going at the moment, John Finn Hospital at Yeah, and you know, the, the coaches today, how's Trevor Gilmer to feel? One of the great defenders. Here they go again, De Goyce. No, it's a penalty for an obstruction. I saw that, yeah. What am I meant to do? 
the car, can't just drop on the ground. I understand that, but you've blocked a bloke trying to take it who's making a tackle, all right? I, mean, I understand. I can't, I can't disappear. I yes. agree with you, but the problem is, what's, what's if, if you... What would you expect me to do? I, it, that's just the way the rule stands. If you impede a defender, it's a penalty. That's the way it is. He's not the man being penalised, Kirk Gidley. I, I think Kirk Gidley might just be trying to stop a quick tap We'll see the penalty. He's not being penalised. I think that was a tough call anyway. But you, you're penalising the man. You're penalising Isaac, Isaac de Goyce. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with Kurt Gidley. De Goyce has decided to run behind him. And Kurt Gidley is not being penalised. It's Isaac de Goyce. Here is Prince to Bird. And they're in the Titans. A tough call against the Newcastle Knights. And Greg Bird gets the try. I understand your frustration. That is. But it's the way the rules, mate. It was, right look, it was momentary. It was, it was a split second that Greg Bird was impeded for. So I haven't really got a problem with that penalty, and he's, he's plunged over on that right side there. But I don't think there's any real point now in Kurt Gidley arguing the point. He, yeah, any further? And you understand what I'm saying. He's not the man being penalised. It's up to Isaac de Goyce to avoid running behind him. And that's where the hole opened up. So, yeah, like they had to give a penalty. So Kurt Gidley's argument about what am I supposed to do? Well, nothing, Kurt. Isaac de Goyce is the man that has to avoid that. He's supposed to stop and let them tackle him or, or be penalised. Just to the right. It was an important kick. 34 to 18 seems a little bit more respectable than 34 to 16, but still three converted tries. The difference, and it just seems that every time Newcastle is getting the football in this half, they're almost unstoppable. So the, the Titans have to hold on to the football as long as they can and make sure when they do turn it over, it's right at the other end of the park. As soon as they get into that 30 or 40 metre zone out from the line, they, the Titans' defence is just flimsy. And Greg Bird has, he's copped a whack in the chest or the ribs or something. Perhaps it's Sterner. There's the offload for Minicello. This is the hit up from Bird. Has he copped something in the stern there? Well, Frankie in his 200th game. Three, up there, square. One of the originals at the sign of the club. I think it was the fifth signing for the Titans. And there's a pass from Minicello to Thompson that was under pressure, but I think Bodine Thompson was entitled to catch that. He just maybe guilty of trying a little bit too hard there, Mark Minicello. He knows they need points. 20 minutes to go. They need three converted tries. It's going to be hard to come by, though, the way they're playing. Mullen, here is the man. Dog to Uate. Down the touchline. They won't stop after Uate. He gets himself a hat trick. The pass from McDougal was the Gidley flick. And Aku Uate got the prize. He served it up on a platter. Adam McDougal, absolutely perfect play. Two on two, got outside of his man. And the moment the winger, the opposing winger, Peru, came in, he flicked it to Uate. Uate couldn't believe it. It was in his hands with a free run to the line. So easy. Here's the ball out the back from Minicello that Thompson just couldn't keep hold of. Just look at you, Mc, uh, McDougal here, two on two. The little flick when the winger decides to come in. He just had to stay out, Peru. Never in doubt there, Yuate on Rankin. Gidley from the touchline. This is headed towards another two points. And Kurt Gidley makes it 40 points to 16. Down to the touchline, Braithen Astor. Yeah, what about the footwork and the ball there from McDougal? What a combination. McDougal and Oate here on this right-hand side, both strong and both physical players. Add experience to Oate there with McDougal, and the combination is fantastic. 
It's the most points they've scored this season, Newcastle, since round one. When they gave the Panthers a touch-up, 42 points to eight. And since then, it's been pretty barren in terms of points scored. But today, 40. And we've still got 17 minutes of play remaining. Stick. Gidley. Hilda. Degoyce. Drama with a tackle. A dry there as well. It is the last tackle. And Mullen didn't quite get that. Mead has it covered. Ten out from his own line. Thought about passing to Rankin. He's now tackled just over the 20 metre line. Peru. Second half. In the last four matches, as we mentioned before, 78 to 10, they've been outscored. The Gold Coast, well, already they've conceded 24 in the second half. That makes it 102 to 16 in the last five matches. Schrammer had created an overlap here, Thompson. But he cut out the man there, Matty Schrammer, that was going to be the overlap. Yeah, he needed to give the short ball to, to Minicello. <laughs> Through the long pass, Uwadi now getting heavily involved. Left side of the field, he's been pretty good this afternoon, Matt Schramer, when he, he came off the bench. Preston Campbell started the game. And he's still on the bench, Campbell. Hilda, Houston, McDougall, here he is again, the mad dog. This time, Peru gets in there and wraps the football up. Gidley, Mullen, short ball, Leilua into space, Rankin to beat, here comes Junior Sale, he doesn't need him, Keith Leilua, and the Knights are in again. The most points they've scored this season, it's 44, and watch out for 50. Party time in Tinkler Town, Keith Lulia, he came off the bench, he's playing in the back row, and he's hit that hole like a classic second row. Have a look at this. Short ball oh, into space. No one has touched him there. Just got the fullback to beat. Rankin just gets a hand on him, but he can't stop him scoring in the corner. It's just too easy for the Knights. Players hitting holes, players running good lines, good decoys, out the back, wherever they want to play, they're finding space and plenty of them on the try-scoring sheet this afternoon. He's not feeling the best John Cartwright at the moment. He'll be feeling even worse after this performance. And they did score the first try through this man, the Gold Coast. And to lead 6-0 after five minutes. The try just before half-time got them right back in it. And what has happened in this second? Rankin, 10 metres away. Minicello, LaFranchi, looking to become the club's leading try scorer, currently equal with Matt Rogers. Rankin, numbers here. Henry, out the back to Thompson, and they're in again, the Gold Coast Titans. Bo Henry with the Gidley flick. And Bodine Thompson gets his second for the year and gets the Titans fourth for the day. Nice bit of play there, the Titans. Playing catch up footy, but not gonna catch up from here. It's all too late. Still having a go there, ranking the long ball and well flicked out the back. Bit of a, a learning experience that one for Iwate. He's got to trust his inside man. McDougall had that man covered all the way. They had a two man overlap and Iwate just went to sleep on that one, stepped in and saw them scoring on his outside. They're getting beat, they're getting lapped at the moment. Prince just can't hook it enough. And 44 to 20 remains the score. And the game might be in the bag for the Knights, but this is the kind of thing you've, they've got to be concerned about. And this is what opposing 
teams that they're going to come up in, against in the next five weeks want to see or, or will be looking for just this little bit of lack of cohesion out wide. Just didn't communicate properly out there, did they? McDougal and Uate, why did he come in? He should have stayed out. McDou McDougal had the man covered. No team has scored 50 points this season. So an opportunity here for Newcastle to set the benchmark. They haven't scored as a club, Newcastle, 50 points since 2006. Bird plays it. Here is Shrama out of acting half. Preston Campbell back out there. He has a bit of a run. Pushes away from Fua. Oh, short of halfway. Torpy. Numbers here again for the Titans. Henry back to Minicello. Good defence there from Houston, but they get the pass away and dived upon by the Knights. The Titans reckon he juggled that to Goyce, but the ref says play on. Space out wide again. And Gidley noticed it, but O'Dwyer made the tackle. Leah down the touch line. The kick in field for no one. O'Dwyer has it covered. Dummy to Campbell. But another opportunity. He's begging for Newcastle. It's just the ease with which they're making those opportunities that has to worry the Titans. Hey, two! Let's get on, Isaac! Henry looking for a short ball for Minicello. Bailey. Trevor Gilmer still looking on. Sure a bit perplexed about this performance today. Srama across field. Last tackle. Stone pleased with the points four, but he'd be too happy about conceding 20. That's Gidley on his goal line. A good chase there from the Gold Coast Titans. Watch his neck. Just watch that crusher there. It's just an awkward position to have a player Two. in to keep forcing pressure down on the back of the head. He's limping a bit too, Kurt Gidley. In the background. Well, the game's well and truly in the bag, so if there's any issue there with Kurt Gidley, he doesn't need to stay in the field. May be the message coming out from Rick Stone. From Mullen back to Tafua. And the trainer straight out to Kirk Gidley. No, he's run past him. But maybe it wasn't the message as Tafua. That's five. Okay, sure. Slow to his feet. Right. This might be the first time right. we've had timeout signal in the match. The video referee Bernie Sutton shouldn't be paid today. He's done nothing. Is it, is it, yeah, and all the tries that have been scored. I don't think there has been a... Was there a... This is the Gidley tackle where he's, he's a bit awkward there. Luke back, O'Dwyer back. just... Step back. Last one. Just keeps... Oh, when he hits go. the ground here, that, that's where it can get a bit <laughs> awkward. Well, there were two players there, so it was... Hold I think hold either player was intentionally pushing him that way. Preston Campbell returns it. And here comes Gidley from the field for Newcastle. And going on, Zane Tedavano. So maybe that was the instruction from Rick Stone. He's had hamstring problems. Gidley, Bird has been the Titans' best today. Greg Bird just couldn't link with Minicello. Sroma, now Henry. Alston almost threw him into touch. And Uate tried but couldn't succeed either. Frankie, Bailey, the player taken out, penalty says the referee, pass was forward. The pass is forward but we've got a penalty here, taken out off the ball. What he went through is a deep hit. Bailey 
Ali with the tap. Prince, dummy, stepping, looking for an opening. One. Nothing let it there. Go, let it go. No, Scott. Stop jumping around. You won't get it like that. Trauma. Here's LaFranc. He ran straight into the back of Scott Prince. Lost the ball. Costigan comes up with it. Knock on, knock on, knock on. We'll play the knock on. Well, he comes out here. He had to. Well, here's where Bird has got taken out as a decoy. Back here. And they got a penalty for this. Up here on the line, fellas. Matty. Matt, bring it back. He's taken out on suspicion, I suppose. Just stood his ground there. He run through as a decoy. Yeah. It wasn't. Too late, really, was it? Wasn't too much in it, was it? Point him again, Isaac. Thank you. Two hands. Hold it, hold. Out. Not sure. Here's Kirkitty looking on, no ice on that hammy, so that's a good sign. So they've got four minutes, Newcastle, to try and be the first team this year to score 50 points. Better go from this end of the field to the other as Kafusi plays it, which they've done a couple of times today. Costigan. Two tackles left in this set and a sloppy play. The ball Andy, hand mate. in, Luke, says Luke the referee. So it's a penalty against Luke Bailey. Luke. 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 I understand. I understand you're frustrated. He's given me a decision after I <laughs> made my call, right? That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Luke Bailey's way of saying he dropped it. He, he, the football. <laughs> he just dropped it. Kafusi, he's telling, he's saying where his hand was. <laughs> get I, think we could, for that. I think we could see that on the replay. On the line, fellas. Junior Sauer with a bit of an issue there. On the line. Hold. In Newcastle. Well, the way it's a penalty. We've gone through a whole of tape there, taping up that thigh. One! Oh, Clinton! Nothing silly, Clinton. Nothing silly. Yeah, that's it. Mullen. Hilda. Two! Who's out for now? Here's Sting. On the back comes McManus down the touch line. The defence is there on Lulia. He's only a metre or two away. An opportunity here for Newcastle. Awful ball from acting half, but Stig somehow manages to stay alive. Hilda out to Houston. Here comes the Mad Dog linking up, but Houston takes the tackle. Two left in the set. Just get up, Chris, you're on top. The Goyce. There's Mullen looking for runners. The kick. Costigan chasing. Costigan may have scored. And they may get their 50. He has scored. Kick to come. Newcastle are getting set for a half century. The clever little play there from Jared Mullen. Really late kick at the line. Titans defence at sixes and sevens. Once again, we've said that all afternoon. They've been backpedalling, unable to, to recover. You see one of the defenders on the ground there. They're always a bit short. He gets right to the line. Costigan chasing through. Right foot step, left foot step, then the kick. Oh, did he get it down cleanly? The yeah, referee was right there. I think he did, just happened pretty quickly. Someone's got to come up and have this kick at goal to get the 50 points up. It's going to be Ryan Stick. Neville Costigan's third try of the season. This should be the last play of the game as well. Gold Coast are not going to be in any hurry to get back to halfway. Ryan Stig trying to get his second goal in first grade to make it 50 for Newcastle. There it is. And for the first time in 2011, the team has broken the half century. And it's Newcastle. 50, the Gold Coast 20. And the Gold Coast in no hurry to get back to halfway and who can blame them.
It has been a thumping win for Newcastle. And importantly, in front of 17,500 fans, they have opened up a four-point buffer from the top eight to the rest of the teams. Full time here in Newcastle, the Knights 50, the Gold Coast 20. This has been a Fox Sports production. This program brought to you by Harvey Norman. There's a store near you. TAB Sportsbet. You're on at tab.com.au. And Jim Beam, the Bourbon.